The idea of what color does to color has been coming up an awful lot lately, and I keep repeating that. What does color do to color? Then in one of our recent workshops, the issue really came home. And I'm going to show you what happened then in this tip. Here's a an unfinished little study that I used or I, uh, that I used for demonstration in the workshop uh, I was telling you about. And the idea was when you have we're looking through leaves and you see sky and the terminology we use these days is sky holes. Got to get those sky holes. Uh, what color are you going to use? Well, the idea would be the traditional idea. You use a sky blue color. Right, which sky blue color? So I want to show you what color does to color and how we, it's a good idea for us to be, if we're using sky holes or if we're putting sky holes in our paintings, it's a good idea to kind of th think about the color we're using or at least watch what happens when we put it down. So, okay, I'm going to start it first. Now, uh, I've got two blues here. The blue sky, usually, uh, too often, too often people will just reach for cerulean blue if it's the sky. Well, the sky's got all variations of blue in it. And not only that, but when we're painting, we've got to be sure that the color that we put in is going to behave the way we need it to behave within the color that is located on the painting itself. You see, all those things the effect how the eye receives color. So let's start out with what we would think would be a uh, sky blue. Uh, rather than cerulean blue, I've put out here a phthalo blue, which is the same hue as cerulean blue, and I've added white to it. And then by itself, well, this is just a, a middle value of phthalo blue with white, but you can see how close that is to cerulean blue. And a lot of people would just reach for that. Uh, I probably shouldn't use a lot of people as my examples, but I would say the tendency is to reach for that. So let's put some white down here, and uh, and so are, are variations of that. So uh, a, in a lighter portion, we might think if we are looking at the sky coming through here, that might be the temptation to do that. Well, let me show you what happens if you do. All right, so I'll just reach for that that color and I've got just a small brush here so I can work in a small area. And we'll just reach for that color. Now where can we put it? We see lots of, we don't, you know, the photo bleaches the blue out, but we will automatically call it blue, believe me. Uh, all right, so we would automatically, almost any place we could choose, but let me just say I'll choose a little section, uh, let's say right in this vicinity. Let's see this vicinity right in here. All right, so I'd say, okay, let's put a little sky hole right there. Do you notice what happens when I did that? All of a sudden it looks greener. Now, do you also notice how here on this white paper, the color looks different from the way it looks right here? Well, what do we do about that? Now, let's consider what's going on with the color, how color affects color. When you just have a single color on a white surface, that's all you see is that single color and you don't see what's going on around it or how, how your eyes might be uh, reading two colors together. But uh, let's put the color wheel up and show you exactly what's happening when we get a complement, a complementary color surrounding the color. So the color we have here is about right in here and we have the complement surrounding it there. And you notice it goes greener. Our eyes have a tendency to read uh, colors that, uh, co if you have two colors and they have a single color in common, 
Our eyes tend to want to read that and blend. And that and so our eyes will do two things here. The reds that are in there, or are, are, are reds and the oranges that are in there, the oranges especially I should say, are going to emphasize the blue, but the reds that are in the oranges are going to pull the green out, and then the yellows that are in the oranges are going to blend with the yellows here and cause that to go greener or feel greener. All right, so let's look at other possibilities. In that case, we might do a little manipulating there and move that a little bit. If we look at the color wheel again, let's, let's pull this down so you can see it better. Put it right here. All right, so let's say we're in this blue right here. That would tell us that we don't need to go towards green. We can only go two ways when we're changing a hue in a color. We go this way or that way, to the right or the left of where, how the color is located on the wheel. All right, so we know better than to go that way. It's already looking greener. What if we go that way? What if we go more towards the violet? So I've got ultramarine blue here on the palette. Now ultramarine blue uh, is a blue that leans towards violet. Slightly leans toward violet. And let me wash this brush out really, really good and show you. Now let's take the color wheel down for the moment. And so I'll show you the difference now, ultramarine blue by itself in the similar value area as the thalo blue with white added into it. You see the difference between those two. And you can see now, you can really see how this leans more towards violet because of the greenness in the blue here that pulls that red out of it. Or visually, we pull that red out of it. So let's uh, add a little bit of white in here just a little bit and get that about the same value as that and say perhaps that would be the answer so I think now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this color away and now that you've got that memory of what will happen let's just play with it and this also shows you that you this is a possibility especially when you're working back on a uh, uh, an area that's already where the paint's already dry. Now this is in oil. The technique is uh, going to be just a little bit differently. Going to work a little different, but the color is going to work the same in oil. A watercolor, you would have to lift that out completely. With uh, that's that's uh, another technique, the technical thing. All right, so I'm going in here into the ultramarine blue, and let's put the ultramarine blue. Is this where where was I right in here? Yeah. Let's put the ultramarine blue in that same area. Now, you notice how I put, when I put the ultramarine blue in there, you see it turns green too. Now, if you see, you don't see the two side by side, but you saw me pick up the ultramarine. And so that means the orange, the red, the reds in the, the reds in this, are, are the oranges in this, I'm sorry. The oranges in here are causing the yellow to blend and it's causing it to feel more green to us. Uh, so, let's try some little experiments here now. We can lean this more towards violet, more towards the blue-violet, and we can actually get it to blend and look bluer, even though it doesn't look bluer here. So, let me rinse the brush out here, the big brush. I'm using two brushes here, as you can see. Um... I think this time what I'm going to do is leave that there to, so that you see, can see the comparison. Uh, all right, so let's take the, I'm going to take the palette knife here and I'm going to do a va little value correcting here. This is red violet. The, the tube color of this particular color is actually quinacridone violet. But it's a red violet. And I chose the red violet instead of the red because it's got some blue in it. And so now, if we add up, pull just a little bit of the red violet into this ultramarine blue. Let's get it a little bit more. That's good enough to work with. And let's just go gradually. Now you see, see how red violet that is. Uh, let me put that down here so you can see the comparison. See those two together there. So you see that is considerably different from this. Look at look how far we've already moved on from what we thought we might use. All right, let's let's uh, let's try that red violet. Did I take it too far? So let's just put that right here and look at that. 
that begins to feel right. Now, we might even lighten it up a bit. So I'm going to take away take away this and not have the influence of that. Well, we hope we can get most of it away at least. And maybe, maybe it could stand to be a little bit lighter now. Maybe we're in the right hue range now and we just need to control the value. And let's see if we just make that just a little bit lighter in here. Just perhaps a little bit lighter, and we want to blend the edges a little bit because sky holes always have their. Oh, when when we create sky holes, uh, it's a good idea to blend the edges really, really good. Go back to the edges discussion we had um, on YouTube, uh, and you'll find you'll see what we mean by that. But if, if when you're actually looking through trees, and you see sky coming through. If you look really, really closely, that those edges are really kind of blurring just a little bit. And so we'll make those edges blur just very, very slightly. Let me give my hand just a little bit of a prop here. And uh, skip just a touch, just a touch of the edge. The brush can't be too wet for that. It really needs to be dry for that. Just a touch of the edge. And gets those edges blurred, a little bit more blurred, like that. Now the shape of the sky hole too, uh, those will vary, and, and it's just according to what you're looking at here, uh, but I think the, the, the thing is we need to watch for that is we don't repeat the same shape all the way through. But I've kind of made that a lot bigger so that you can see now. You see, <laughs> in fact, that now begins, you can see that what's beginning to happen, that's beginning to feel a little bit more of the green, but it it feels more like the blue that we see in the sky than that first one did. So let's review what actually happened. Now this is about what color does to color, what hue does to hue when they're side by side. Our eyes do funny things to hot color. Color has a funny way of working, uh, not just in mixtures, but when two colors are side by side. So we can put this back up here, put the color wheel back up here, and, and let me kind of show you what's really happening. The, you might say the physics, I don't want to get too deep into science because I'll get corrected by some scientists that <laughs> who'll be watching this. But, so we have the orange and we have blue to start with. Blue and orange are complements. When our eyes see complements together, the complements enhance each other. So the orange brings out the blue, and the blue brings out the orange. When we have lots and lots of orange, or when we have lots and lots of one complement, and a little bit of the other complement, uh, if those complements have a color in common, that color wants to dominate the smaller color. It's really an interesting thing. So there's, a ye there, there's yellow in the orange here. Actually, this is, this is, let's go right up here, yeah. There, there's yellow in, lots and lots, yeah, there's variations here of yellow orange to, to red orange. But there's, there's yellow present there, and there's yellow present here in blue-green. And so if we then, in a painting, use the blue-green for our sky for a scene where you have fall leaves like that, What's going to happen is there's so much yellow in here, it's going to pull the yellow out visually of that little spot of blue-green. It pulls the yellow out and makes it look a lot greener than we know it to be. So then when we're painting, we adjust for that by adding the red back in. In other words, we've got more red now. We're really sort of pushing it towards, we're saying, please, please, please pull some of the green out. Red. And, and green are compliments. <clears throat> so by adding the red in, we neutralize the green out and that makes that feel more blue. So you see, when we, when we really train ourselves to see what color does the color, when the colors are placed side by side, or when we're working with them together, not just as the colors are mixed into each other, we can see some fascinating things happen. If we're on guard, we can control that. Be sure to view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. 
And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DyingMinds.com where I have full length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.